Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here is your host, Father Jay Friedel. Good morning, and thanks for joining us again for another episode of Faith in Our Hometown. Uh, it's good to have you with us on another Sunday morning. Uh, my guest this morning is Gordon Clymer. We had Gordon on about, two, uh, oh, about three, four weeks ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. And one of the conversations we were having uh, prior to that episode was about all the different ways that Joplin has kind of like fed the world with some of its missionary activity. And when we started having the conversation, it got to be pretty fascinating. Uh, part of Gordon's role as a retired minister of the Christian Church and also as a former professor at uh, OCC, Ozark Christian College, uh, shows us that Joplin, for some reason, has developed into this little melting pot where it basically has reached out into the rest of the world and done a little missionary activity. So we're going to talk to Gordon about that. It's pretty fascinating when you stop to see what we've been about. But uh, we'll be right back after this Mercy Minute, so stick around and stay with us. The different bariatric surgical options here at Mercy Joplin includes laparoscopic room and wide gastric bypass, laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, and laparoscopic lap band placement. In addition, we also offer revisional laparoscopic uh, surgeries for those patients that have had previous bariatric procedures but have had failures. The surgical uh, procedure of choice uh, will vary with different individuals, and so that's why our team will work with the, the patient on an individual basis to determine which procedure is the best fit for them. All three of the bariatric procedures that we offer here at Mercy Joplin have a long track record of proven safety and efficacy. Um, the best procedure for the individual has to be a decision to be decided between the patient and the physician. So again, thanks for joining us for another episode of Faith in Our Hometown. Again, this morning we're talking to Gordon Clymer. Uh, Gordon is a retired professor from Ozark Christian College and a retired minister of uh, the Christian Church. Right. And so Gordon, uh, thanks for joining us again this morning. Our conversations before led, us to, led me to understand, probably in a way that I hadn't thought about before, how many different ways that Joplin has kind of like grown up and supported the, uh, some, some amazing missionary activity around the world. Ozark Christian College has also always had a rather uh, focused missionary worldview. And so uh, a number of uh, months ago, I decided I wanted to do some research about what was happening in the city of Joplin. Uh, of all places, you wouldn't expect the kinds of things that are happening here. Who knew? Uh, and I'm, I'm simply <laughs> focusing on the Christian church. Sure. Uh, you know, I'm sure other groups have other activities like this, but um, I listed uh, 40 different ministries that emanate out of graduates and people from Ozark Christian College that are centered in Joplin. And uh, I chose 15 of them just to talk about in an article. And uh, so I've, I've just uh, tried to limit it to the things that have been produced by Ozark fellows. For instance, Don DeWelt was a teacher at Ozark for a number of years, and um, he had the idea of publishing. So College Press was one of his uh, one of his extra ministries. And a number of years ago, he uh, tabbed the, the idea of literature and teaching ministry. One of the things that happens with them is that they're um, facing on the mission field in various cultures a lack of resource books and helps that leaders in the in the particular culture would face and so literature and teaching ministry uh, simply combines with uh, various uh, needs in various countries and produces either new books or translations of american books english speaking books uh, that they can use in their ministry. Uh, they are celebrating their 25th anniversary, and in those 25 years, they have printed or published more than two million books oh. in 68 languages with almost 900 different projects. 
And um, you know, who would have thought out of Joplin comes two million books scattered across the world? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting that, you know, suddenly a, a need for publishing, a need right. for written literature, right. okay? I know that there are some other groups uh, that we've actually had on the show. We've not had them on the show at this point in time, mm -hmm. but we had some other groups on the show. Some do video, same thing. Yes, well, a second one is Good News Productions International. Right, That's we've, had, here. we've had Mike Schrage on the show, yeah. Zaidnut is a graduate. He's the one that founded uh, Good News Productions. He's a graduate of Ozark Christian College and was a missionary in Africa, as was Mike Schrage. And um, uh, while I worked there, they estimated that on the average, six and a quarter million people saw something Good News produced every day. Um, wow. They have a, what they call a global gospel, which is a New Testament gospels in pictures. It's a fascinating story. Don DeWelt was on an airplane and sat next to a lady. She asked what he did, and he said he was a teacher in a seminary and uh, a publisher. And she said, well, have you ever heard of the visualized New Testament? Yes, he'd seen it, but he said he couldn't find it. No, she said, it's out of print. My, it was my husband's minister. Right, okay. And she said, I've been praying for five years for somebody to come along who'd take up the interest. So <laughs> she gave him a copy and he brought it back here and a local artist, Paula Giltner, redid all of the pictures and it's the simple text of scripture below each picture. Right. So they can transfer those languages, translations under each picture. And uh, Good News has picked it up and they call it the global gospel. There are 107 different Life of Christ visualized stories in this series. And um, it's available on every device, your smartphone, your computer, your uh, tablet, anywhere in the world. And it's presently available in 20 um, international uh, widely used languages. So good news has an outreach. Um, a, a third one, Joe Garman leads American Rehabilitation Ministries. Right. And they have a ministry to prisons and prisoners. Uh, interestingly enough, Joe has traveled all over the country uh, doing those kinds of things. They um, hand out uh, more than 40,000 English and Spanish Bibles in prisons each year. And uh, recently, uh, they had more than 17,000 prisoners in their correspondence Bible studies. Wow. Um, and again, these are just little things that started up by... 17,000 yeah. prisoners. Yeah. They've see, also... I'm used, to, I'm used to thinking about those things. I mean, you know, when I think about the Catholic Church, I mean, you know, that's just a... That's a they, we've got a huge umbrella. Mm -hmm. So I'm used to, you know, hearing about, mm -hmm. okay, well, what this group is doing over in this mm -hmm. area, or, you know, we've got groups doing prison mm -hmm. ministry and those things. But what amazes me is, again, just... Um, I mean, I guess I, I, I guess this is just its own little thing, you know. Uh, you know, Rome, what happened there, and what mm -hmm. blew out of there. Uh, certainly, the other, you know, titular churches, Jerusalem, some of those things that were, you know, again, things started and then expanded. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but it, it's just when we were talking about this, the Lil Joplin. Yeah. I was kind of like, wow. Yeah. You know, this is kind of amazing. You know, that some of this who'd stuff have happened. That? Yeah. Who'd sure. have thought? They yeah. have a contract with Dayspring greeting cards, that they greeting cards that they bring back, unsold, uh, they give to, good, uh, to uh, ARM and they sort them and match envelopes. And uh, they gave out uh, last year, um, well, I, <laughs> I thought I saw it, um, 498,000 oh, Gospel of John books. But they, they have also uh, given out these greeting cards, 4.3 million cards to <laughs> prisons each year. Those are cards that prisoners can send. Right. Not sent to prisoners, right. but prisoners send. Right. And so, they get the opportunity to do that, you know, and stay in contact with their folks on the yeah, outside. Yeah, know? and yeah. it's a part of the therapy. Christ in Youth was begun by a teacher at, at uh, Ozark Christian College named Bob Stacy, And uh, over the years, uh, Christ in Youth has developed 
uh, high school and junior high programs. And uh, last year, they had in their junior high and senior high um, programs, week-long programs, more than 40,000 across the country. And uh, they have a, a wide variety of mission trips with junior high and senior high kids uh, to do service projects and a variety of other things. Um, one of my friends, who was a director of missions at Ozark, uh, when he came to retirement age, um, had studied Islamic world. And so uh, he and his wife moved to Amman, Jordan. And they have an outreach library in Amman, Jordan, the only public lending library in the city of two million people. And uh, out of that, uh, they have given uh, opportunity for both uh, Islamic people and uh, English-speaking people from all over the world an opportunity to come and read and study and borrow CDs and, and other things. Um, it's called Books and More, and it's in Amman, Jordan. Um, Rafa House. Uh, right. Joe's, we had Rafa House on the show before, yeah. Okay, Joe's daughter, right. uh, Stephanie Freed, went to uh, Cambodia and developed uh, houses of rescued girls from the slave, the sex traffic. Right. And uh, my, what a marvelous opportunity. Uh, then <clears throat> also uh, an Ozark graduate, uh, Carolyn Schrage leads Life Choices. Life Choices here. has certainly helped us out on this show. And uh, Carolyn's uh, a good, good woman. They, they have reached more than 10,000 public school children each year to talk about values, uh, moral and sexual values, and the problems of abortion and the things that they're trying to, to, to uh, avoid. So in, in all, Joplin has, has outreach in so many different areas in different countries. Uh, Ozark Christian College has graduates in 100 countries and all 50 states. And so um, who, who would have thought Joplin, Missouri would have that kind of outreach? No, and it is interesting to hear, you know, again, how that, uh, that uh, creativity when it comes to you know, uh, spreading the good news has, uh, or even just in helping other people in need, uh, you know, has kind of blossomed uh, in a way that uh, that has kind of just grown exponentially as it as it you know yeah. flows out from here. I asked Joe Garman one time, how many courses in prison ministry did you have in in Bible college? Well, mm -hmm. he laughed and said none. Yeah. But their, their ministry idea is you find an opportunity to serve people in the name of Christ with a biblical perspective and God will direct you. He will guide you. Yeah. I also um, surveyed, there are 28 Christian churches in the greater Joplin area. Uh, that means within a 10 mile radius. Okay. And I simply uh, surveyed them and I said, I don't want to know your, your, mission, your, your budget. I don't want to know your benevolent budget. I want to know how much you gave away in a year to do mission work around the world. Well, let's hang on. We're going to come right back. And I think it's okay. going to be a good place for us to pick up uh, right after this short break. All right. All right. You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN TV, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. Well, thanks for sticking with us this morning. Uh, again, my guest has been Gordon Clymer. Uh, Gordon was here a few weeks ago talking about retired ministers. And uh, as a retired minister of the Christian Church and a retired professor at Ozark Christian College, uh, he's been doing all this research on how ministry is spread out. Now, right before the break, we were talking a little bit about um, what, uh, what just even some of the Christian churches have done mm -hmm. uh, in terms of what, the, what if their budget goes to spreading you know Christian message other places throughout the world and you were talking a little bit about that one before right before the yeah, break. Christian churches are more independent in the sense that uh, 
we've often said they support missionaries, not missions. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a personal relationship that they develop with somebody in some other part of the world that they want to contribute to their sustenance. Mm -hmm. So I simply ask them, what uh, amount of your money did you give to missions outside of the local church, outside of the local community? And out of the 20, I, I found 23 out of the 28, and it exceeded $2 million a year. Uh, aggregately, yes. yeah, altogether. Collectively, yeah. mm -hmm. $2 million out of Joplin. Yeah. And I mean, you know, and again, think of all those other places out there. I mean, you know, there's so many churches that support so many different, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the assemblies have got all their mm -hmm. missions mm -hmm. and, you know, their, mm -hmm. their corporate, you know, kind of mm -hmm. the way that they blanket things. Mm -hmm. Certainly, you know, Catholic missionaries and missions, same way, some mm -hmm. of those, so those projects. But I mean, you know, mm -hmm. so if you think of it, that was just 20, which is how many that was? That was? 23 churches. So there was 23 churches and that was 2 million among those 23 churches. And so when you stop and you start looking at again when you start taking all the churches in Joplin and we got bunches yeah we got bunches yeah. wonder that would be so, that would be so fascinating to find out yeah. how much what the con conglomerate of churches in the city of Joplin yeah give to missions well and I'm sure it's I'm sure it's the, the, the I'm sure that the uh, amount would you know kind of stagger us all yeah uh, when you stop and think about that, because I'm just thinking about you know our efforts and tag those along with yours and all the other different groups that you know that that do uh, missionary work or support missionaries uh, who've come from you know their own area or or those kinds of things. I'm I'm amazed at like I said I and I, I shouldn't be, but when we started talking about this, I was kind of like wow, I just hadn't realized you know you don't see the whole impact until somebody puts it together in a place. But again, when you stop and think that you know, uh, you know, Jesus started with twelve, yeah, and you know, now look what we've got, yeah. you know, um, yeah. um, and I know it wasn't just twelve, but I mean, but still, you know, it's amazing that a little movement that started in one little area of the world, you know, can kind yeah. of spread in that way. L let me read you my conclusion because I think this is important. The synergy and diversity of these ministries is a testimony to the body of Christ working together as each part fulfills a unique function in the living body. Mm -hmm. The influence of this one small city could and may be repeated in various places across the world. It's not my purpose to identify Joplin, Missouri as some utopia of Christian <laughs> service. It's well, meant, however... I never thought of us as a utopia before, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> it's meant, however, as an encouragement and a challenge to see the bigger picture of influence beyond what most people would see in a single congregation. Which I think is, I think that's a very true statement. I mean, you know, guys, again, I, I agree with you. I mean, I don't see Joplin as this, you know, um, you know, as so unusual, no. but I see us as really, truly, in so many instances, trying to live out the gospel yeah. and give witness to it wherever we happen to be. Especially after you study the history of Joplin. Yeah. At one point, they were report was there were more bars and saloons in Joplin than there were churches. Uh-huh, and I know that the Founding Fathers wanted to do something about that, which is yeah. how we got yeah. some of our churches, right. you know, here in the area. But that's not, that, should, that shouldn't be unusual in the history of the U.S. especially, no. No. Uh, you know, that we had on the frontier so many different, uh, so many different groups that went in and started out in a mining community like sure. this. It was rough and tumble when yeah. they first started. Yeah. But then they wanted to get a little bit, rub, rub, you know, knock off the rough edges and, and, and bring a little uh, of other values into it rather than just, you know, uh, the competition and, the, you know, whoever can be the loudest and the roughest. Well, my point wasn't necessarily to say, look at us and what we're doing. Right. But to help individuals see the big picture. Mm -hmm. And what, what a small town like Joplin could do is doing if uh, we put our minds and heads and pocketbooks together. When I, and I do think it's amazing because, I mean, this is just, like as you said, this is not, uh, you know, and, and we could have had, you know, if any other group wants to come on at some yeah. point in time and tout what you're doing, I'd love to see what that Or if they'd like to do that research. I, I'd love I'd to love see it. the Baptist uh, yeah. conglomerate kind of picture of what they're doing. And put together the conglomerate of all the different Baptists. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and right. see what you know, see what's going right. on there. That would be a, that would be absolutely amazing. 
I'm still looking for some good Baptists to be on this show. <laughs> but, you know, see how it goes. Um, but we, um, I do think, I think your point is a good one, and I, and I, was, I was fascinated by the premise of the article uh, in terms of, you know, what's just really been done, and it was kind of grown out of here to mm -hmm. do some of those things. Mm -hmm. um, and again, let's face it, we're all, we're all, uh, we're still, all of our denominations, all of us are out there still training young people to try to figure out how to respond in a way. Um, I mean, you know, the ways that I had to do things, you know, when I was first ordained 30 years ago, um, or were very different methods than we're having to need yeah. to use today. Yeah. Because the world's changed. Yeah. Uh, we got to figure out how to evangelize in new ways. Yeah. Uh, which I find uh, always fascinating because the message really isn't new, the person isn't new, but uh, the person of Jesus isn't new, but I'm just saying, but we've got to figure out new ways of doing that in different Well, in we different were talking times. about good news production started out with film strips. Right. When I started there, they were using videotapes. I chose the, the uh, CDs for my distance learning program but my, what what opportunity technology is provided? Oh my gosh, yes. Today, now that's we stream so drastically things. Different. We do our thing. Sure, yeah. sure. From anywhere in the world, it's amazing. One of the stories that they came back with, uh, visiting a mud village in Africa, they uh, wanted to know if they could hear anything from their smartphone, and they tried it, and, and there wasn't anything. Uh, couldn't get any reception, and a lady came out of a mud hut with a mud floor and said, I think if you go up there on the hillside, you'll get better reception. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> yeah. And it worked. Yeah, I, um, it is just amazing the way that uh, we can use yeah. technology in a yeah. way that we never thought of 30 or 50 years ago. 15. Um, well, yeah, exactly. And it changes so much faster now mm -hmm. uh, than it ever did mm -hmm. before. Um, I can't keep up. I, I teasingly tell my students these days that I skip every other thing, <laughs> you know, because I know that they're going to go at it faster and, uh, you know, more furious than right. I can go after it. One of the things that encourages me about Joplin is that there is this creative application of the gospel. And if we can just encourage people to go with the flow, to take advantage of every opportunity, to take advantage of the new techniques, um, years ago, if a missionary went to a field, he went by boat. It took him two weeks to get there, two weeks to get home. Today, you can go anywhere in the world in a day. Or and at least so, get close to it. <laughs> it may take you that other day to actually get there, but you can get close to it in a day. It's true. Well, I've enjoyed traveling through the years, and uh, Ozark had summers that were relatively uh, un- classified mm -hmm. and it's free. So I've been in 76 countries. Oh, you certainly got me so, beat. Uh, yeah. you know, it's, it, it is an opportunity to see the opportunity, the advantages today of our day to be alive. Yeah. If you had to choose a day out of all of history to be alive with all of the difficulties and the problems of our day, you'd want to choose today. Yeah. One of the things you were talking about creativity, and, and uh, we always talk about it in terms of, you know, in kind of Catholic circles, of a Catholic imagination. Mm -hmm. You know, how mm -hmm. do we help infuse the world mm -hmm. with a, a Catholic, or let's mm -hmm. even for our purposes, as we're going to say, a Christian way of being able to see the world? Mm -hmm. For us always as Catholics, I mean, that's our sacramentality. That's our, mm -hmm. how does all of it become mm -hmm. flesh? How does all of it, you know, become uh, tangible mm -hmm. in a particular way? And how do we bring that about? And I hear so much of that in the creativity of all these different people that you have uh, you know, brought up, uh, you yeah. know, that have, that have grown out of uh, some of the ministries that are being done. It's, it's just a, it's an ability to try to, how do we engage the rest of the world's imagination? So how do we preach or proclaim what we believe to be true in a context like that uh, as it continues to unfold and I, grow uh, in the world? I went to an art award banquet or meeting at Carl Junction two, three years ago, mm -hmm. and I heard this statement. Creativity without discipline is simply daydreaming. And for a Christian, in terms of that, or in terms of really any person of faith, discipline is making yourself a disciple of something yeah. or someone. Being open to the providential leading of God. 
Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I'm encouraged by what's happening among our uh, the Christian churches, but um, let's ha have it happen across the world. Yeah, and I think it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, you know, certainly in terms of seeing that, I, I know I've been edified by some of it. Uh, you know, when I've watched what some of the other folks in the area have done, or I, I, you know, sometimes I certainly, even in my own denomination, mm -hmm. get edified by what people are doing in other spots mm -hmm. in the world. And I, you know, sometimes I get thrilled by the fact that my little donation here or my little, you know, training here has helped something like that to happen. And yeah. I'm sure as a teacher, yeah. and especially, yeah. you know, in your own denomination, it, it's kind of helpful to do that. Well, my guest this morning is, has been Gordon Clymer. And Gordon and I have been talking about, um, you know, the way that, that, that creativity and missions have just kind of blossomed out of Joplin. We're going to be right back after this Mercy Minute to wrap up, so stick with us, please. Mercy Doctor can take care of you. At Mercy, your life is our life's work. Quality, safety, and an exceptional patient experience. Mercy is grateful to be recognized as one of the top 15 health systems in the United States. At Mercy, your life is our life's work. Well, thanks again for joining us for another episode on another Sunday morning of Faith in Our Hometown. I hope that your day is wonderful for you, uh, wherever it takes you after you finish watching TV and get about your business this morning. But my guest has been Gordon Clymer. Gordon is a retired a minister of the Christian Church and wrote a wonderful article on uh, the different ministries that have kind of come forth from the creativity of different people who've studied and worked and lived in Joplin. And uh, that city that touches the world is what he called his, uh, uh, you know, his article. And I, I've been very happy to talk with you this morning, Gordon, about what was in there. Uh, I do think it's important that we remember that there's one action that can happen in any place that can have ramifications uh, because things ripple out from where we are and what we do and what we say and how we go about things. And when we believe in things, those ripples continue to spread. So thanks for joining us. Come back and see us again for another episode of Faith in Our Hometown. Thanks for watching. Faith in Our Hometown can be seen Sunday mornings at 6.30 and 9 a.m. on KSN. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.